Uh, some time ago, I reviewed Days of Future's End, issue 3, and I said that it read like I had missed an issue. Turns out I did, and that was issue 2, this one here. In my defence, there was a zero issue that is responsible for me miscounting. So here we are doing some backtracking and filling in that gap and the plotline I totally forgot about with Ara dying. Remember that? We have got Fire Lord. He is feeling guilty about Ara's death because he was busy getting off with pretty women when Ara sent out an alert to the Justice League requesting L. And then by the time Fire Lord bothered to show up, Ara was dead. I didn't like Ara dying. It is lame and transparent that he's not really dead or that he will come back in a year or two. So an entire issue devoted to his funeral feels like time wasting. We have Mr. Terrificals from the Terrificals and... His new 52 design, which is terrible. Sometimes minimalism just doesn't work. And this is one of them. Give him back his rockin' leather jacket. Even just put that over the top of this and it will be an improvement. This lacks any and all personality. And makes him look like a Catholic priest or a scummy televangelist. The strength of this issue is allowing us some character interactions that help flesh out the new 52 versions of these guys. And where they stand in this plot. Mr. Terrificals is a bit too evil for my liking. A and Acro Man, they debate the merits of the Justice League and Super Heroics. And Mr. Terrificals, in the New 52, he is like a capitalist celebrity. And he has a, you guys got any milk moment down here? Where he gans, we are lucky I am not a villain. Another part of the story is beyond Batman. He went back in time to assassinate Mr. Terrificals and stop him from bringing about T2 Judgment Day. But this is a DC Weekly series. So, my word, does it progress at the pace of a static egg? We have a lot of superheroes show up to Ara's funeral. Superhero funerals are always great for these big artwork moments with 30 plus heroes stood around. It is New 52 DC though, so I didn't recognise a bunch of them. And Creeper isn't there. And... Animals Man was apparently Ara's best mate. And he is the one to speak at the funeral. What happened to Jordan Albert? Or Canary? Or like Superman or Wonder Woman or something? Was Ara really scraping the barrel for best friends in the new 52? We even see... Canary, and then later on, Red Arrow at the funeral. Why are they not the ones doing the eulogy instead of Rob Schneider here? Boring subplot here, so let's just get through this to get back to the gathering. 
Red Arrow, he wants to speak up now. He didn't feel like doing a speech at the funeral, but he wants to accuse Fire Lord of being responsible for Arrow's death. And a fight breaks out between them, and Fire Lord storms off angry. There is a bunch of characters in this bit that I didn't recognise. And then Ea is Lewis, and she is such a star, hot shot, crackpot reporter that she isn't investigating anything. And someone sends a clues in the post as to what to investigate. And in this case, it is Ara's death. I like certain parts of this, and I think that is true of most the DC Weekly books. But the concern has always been the amount of chaff you have to get through for the bits that you like. I like Mr. Terrificals, maybe not this new 52 version, but I like that character, and I like Fire Lord, and I like the stuff with him feeling guilty, and I liked the Borg who were in the first issue, and saw like they were going to be the main focus and threat of this, and then haven't shown up since. But as with those other weekly books, it's just too slow and too inconsistent for me to read 52 issues of plus tie-ins. The weekly series were a neat idea, but I didn't think they were ever done quite right. It is a nice effort, but seven thumbs up.